Hey everyone, what's up? Only me, Feet here, and today I'm going to show you all how to play LCD games through MAME using LaunchBox. There's various ways to launch these LCD games, but I feel LaunchBox is the best way to do this, and MAME is the best way to play these games. So, what kind of LCD games can you play through MAME? Well, there's a variety of them, including but not limited to Game & Watch games like you see here. There's also your Marios and Zeldas. We have the classic Tiger LCD games, and I know you can play right now Street Fighter 2 and Altered Beast, the old school Tiger LCD games. Pretty cool. You can play this guy, Saibiko, the retro uh, communication device before cell phones were cool. And the Extreme as well. Shout out to Ashens. I really like your couch. You can play the old school Tamagotchi Gen 1. And you can even play the Tiger GameCom. And I'm going to be covering how to play all of these through MAME today. Uh, but before I do, I want to give a shout out to something that isn't through MAME. And I want to explain a bit because if you play LCD games on your computer, I know you're going to know who this is. And that is Mad Regal. Now this person is awesome. They painstaking they painstakingly recreated something like sixty LCD games through just coding in Pascal and scanning all of the images and stuff themselves. Amazing work. Uh, but as you'll read on their website, this is not emulation. These are recreate recreations. I find them to be pretty accurate, but this isn't what I'm really covering today. Luckily, if you are interested, I'll leave the URL below, and Mad Regal has took it upon themselves to basically just make a compilation of all their work that you can download for pretty much any system you can imagine. It's really just easy to download and play, and you can even get them on your Super Famicom Minis now. So that's pretty awesome. Again, not what I'm covering, but wanted to give him a quick shout out because wow, I did not know I liked Electronic Dungeons and Dragons until I played his version. Really cool stuff. But we're actually going to be co covering MAME. So before really you do anything, you're going to want to go ahead and download the latest version of MAME. As of this video, it's 0 0.219, which is also the version I'm running. But uh, it might be later when you watch this video, and that's probably fine. So you might need to compile it yourself, which they'll explain to you within uh, their documentation up here. But you can also find pre-compiled versions online if you look hard enough, or just the latest name release in general. Uh, that information isn't too hard to find. I recommend building and compiling, building and compiling name yourself. Yeah, it takes a while, but you feel good about compiling it. It does take a couple hours, at least on my gaming computer. So, download MAME. Then you're also going to need a MAME ROM set. Now that I'm not going to help you all with at all. I'm just going to say you want to look for something with terms like MAME, ROMs, merged. You're going to want the number, uh, the version number of MAME to match closely to the latest release you'll see on the MAME dev website. And that's about all I'm going to say. They're not too hard to find. I will say that's also a lot of data. I believe it's like a 230 gigabyte download if you find the right one. So definitely set up a torrent and be patient, both on compiling this and getting that ROM set. I'm going to assume you have both of these if you need help with that. Uh, that's not really what this video is about. I'm just going to kind of assume you have all that uh, somewhere on your computer already. There's plenty of other main videos that go into way more detail and know way more about that than I do. So, with that being said, we're on the topic of LCD games, right? So, one of the first things I think you should go ahead and do is you want to go to a few websites and get some artwork made by awesome people that make all of these games just way more playable. And uh, the two websites I'll point you to is uh, one website called tistist.net and another one called Mr. Duo's Arcade. Now for this one, you're going to want to go to the filters here, uh, hit handheld game and hit uh, category filter when you land on it. Uh, it doesn't seem like it can really share it easily, but there you go. You're going to want to download these zip files. And with this, I actually have something called 
uh, Chrome Download Manager. So I could hit um, this button right here and hit uh, just these, and I could download all of these without clicking each individual link. Not that that's a big issue, just a little saving tip there. So you're going to want to download all of this artwork, and then if you download, let's say I'll download a box in here. And you're going to want to go ahead and find that wherever your download folder is. You're going to want to take this whole zip file, you're going to want to cut that, you're going to want to find your find your main uh, folder, wherever you compiled that main. It should look, your folder structure should look like this. You're going to want to find artwork, and you just paste that bad boy in there. Uh, here's Game & Watch Boxing right here, so I'm not going to do it again, but do not unzip it. You just cut and paste. Yeah, I'm not replacing it, but cut and paste. There it is right there, and you're going to want to do that with all the artwork on this website, this website, and uh, anywhere else you might find them. In the future, there might be other resources. I'll link them below as I find them. But uh, shout-outs to these artists, because these... Uh, background templates, which you'll see in a minute, are they just make the whole experience a lot better. And if you don't know what I'm talking about here, it'd be like uh, in the Street Fighter 2 game, uh, you can see Bison's background here. It's like putting that image and like the health bar they have standing in and all that uh, in the MAME itself. So it really gives that authentic feel to these games. And it really helps with like the Game Watch games as well. So now that everything's uh, downloaded and pre-configured, I would like to direct you to a nice free program that I paid for and can't specifically remember the paid features, but they're not that many, called LaunchBox. And this, I believe, you need if you play main. Because not only does it split a lot of main games into like easy-to-digest categories, but you can uh, even split them further yourself. So... Let's say you go here, so you download LaunchBox, right? First thing you're going to want to do, go to Tools, go to Import, go to MAME. I'll see how far I can get in this. But uh, basically, uh, you call it the Arcade Platform. You link that, I'm just going to... That's my ROMs folder. Not really. Okay, it doesn't exist. You got me. You got me. Alright, but I'm just going to click like some random folder here. There you go. You're going to want to choose an emulator. Now, you do not want to do that. If you do not have your main emulator set up here yet, you're probably going to want to say add. It all automatically says emulator name. Then you pretty much just find the main executable. Uh, then it's launch box, but it's not. It's looking for main exe, which is what you should put there. And that's pretty much all you have to do to set up main here for now. Like your initial, we're not in the handhelds yet. We're just getting all your main games in this program called launch box. So, uh, after you set up main, make sure you pick it. Then uh, you can search information on LaunchBox's website. ME Movies, I think this is a paid feature. Maybe you have to sign in. I can't remember, but uh, do it if you can. If you can't, you have to pay for LaunchBox. I recommend it, but this is by no means by no means is this necessary. It just adds some more pictures. What you'll see in a minute isn't exactly the most accurate for what we're doing today. But uh, it's it's just a good practice to have, I guess. And then you pretty much set all that up. You're probably going to want to uncheck the skip non-arcade games. The rest of this makes sense. If you like Play Choice 10, you might want to uncheck that as well. But uh, most of this makes sense here. So leave it as is. I like the playlist a lot. and But if you don't, you can kind of like not do them. And then it's going to parse main. It'll pull up all your main games, including the handheld games. And then you'd hit finish. I'm going to hit cancel because I've done that already. That'll take a while to import, especially if you're downloading videos. But what I want to direct your attention to is how we're going to make our handheld electronic game genre category. So what you're going to want to do is when you open this up, it's probably going to be an image view like this. And if you download all, like, all of the images, it's going to look especially wild with all of... Uh, the artwork there. But what you're actually going to want to do is go to the list view is it's going to make our life act a lot easier. And once you do that, you're going to want to click genres up here and you're going to want to find the genre. Oh boy, it drifted a little bit. You're going to want to find a genre called 
handheld electronic game. Because that's exactly the genre we're gunning for right now, just for standalone LCD games. So let me scroll to the top of this here, and I'm going to go ahead and click this, and it looks like we're on baseball. You can see we got that, we got like GoldenEye, we got Back to the Future, we have all these. So what you're going to want to do is find the end of the list. This is not the end of the list. But you're going to want to do this. Uh, sorry, I said do this as I did something on my keyboard. You hold shift and you click. And that will highlight all of them. And from here, uh, you're going to want to add them to a playlist. And you're going to probably need to make a new playlist. So do that and make a new playlist in your handheld. It's called, and I'm calling it Handheld Electronic Game. And this just makes it way easier to see all of MAME's currently supported handheld electronic games. It's easier than digging through MAME itself. I mean, if I type in the string handheld, for example, which MAME does like mention, by the way, but it'll start out first, like giving you some good handhelds, just in MAME's main executable. But then you gotta like scroll down and you get all the stuff that isn't handheld. And there's not really a good way to organize it. Most everyone recommends the main front end, and I'm recommending Launchbox. And the reason I am is actually very important. That's not solely just for playlist reasons, and you're going to see that when I get in the game comp emulation. But for now, you imported all of your games, and you have this nice playlist. I recommend also sorting it either by like title or I like release date personally. Uh, they seem pretty spot on mostly. But from here, if you have your artwork and everything set up, uh, we should be good to go. So let's check out, I'm going to check out one of my favorites. And I think you might see the problem with it. If not, I know of one off the top of my head that's going to ex uh, exhibit a problem I have. So my favorite Tiger LCD game is Gauntlet. And as you can see here, we have the graphics. And MAME defaults all the buttons to this for most Tiger game, so uh, power ons like enter. Uh, I know one, the key number one, can also like start the game sometimes. But uh, outside of that, your controls are going to default to pretty much face buttons on a controller or control alt space shift. And that's pretty much how uh, all of these games work. And you also can map your, I, these three don't, aren't mapped by default, but you can map them if you want and you probably should. But if I start the game here, you can see the background just adds a lot to this game. And I really like Gauntlet. It's one of my favorites just because it uh, is semi-randomly generated and I think represents the game really well as it was. So I highly, highly, highly recommend uh, this game. I'm not going to play too much of it, but uh, my record, I think, is getting a level 4-2, so see if you can get the level 4-3 and beat my record. So I'm going to exhibit a problem with this and why I didn't go all into a big box and the metadata and stuff. And that's because, as you can see with Street Fighter 2 here, I, the meta, the data just isn't there right now. The main database or arcade database isn't really giving us an accurate uh, metadata for a lot of these games that share their names with bigger games. So Street Fighter 2 says it came out in 2003, that's not right. It also is giving you this description, which is for Hyper Street Fighter 2, which is not this game at all, as I'll show you. And that's why I'm not really diving into how to exactly go about getting into all of the metadata and setting up like playlists and images because it definitely seems like a work in progress one I'm willing to work with myself but I kind of don't know what's been worked on so far on it and I don't I definitely don't want to step on anyone's toes if they're doing something with that themselves I just want to say yeah the metadata isn't quite correct on these right now so the last thing I want to show you, all of these games work, and they should work if you got a complete main ROM set. Oh, actually, I did want to show the Cybico real quick, just like the beginning, so you can see uh, Cybico action. Booting up here, loading the OS. Oh, 
Oh, right. Okay. So for the Cybeco, you actually scroll up, kind of toggles between using your keyboard to operate it and uh, partial, which will let you exit it. But I really wanted to show you uh, Tamagotchi, and here's why. See how nice this egg looks? Look at this egg. It looks really nice. But I'll show you what name will default this to. And that is, let's see, I don't know the best way to do this exactly. I think I'm actually going to have to boot up MAME proper, or change the setting in MAME. So when you download MAME, uh, the one video, I'm not going to go through all of this, but the one thing you want to disable is this bilinear filtering. Is if you turn this on, and you save, and we go back. Yeah, I'm going to have to go back and disable that too. But look at that egg. It does not look like it did before, does it? So we're going to go back in the main and switch that. But all of the screenshots right now that are correct for like these LCD games, unfortunately, look just like that egg. And that's not good. So disable bilinear filtering. If you do anything, you're playing these LCD games, please do that. Uh, big, big tip right there. So that'll pretty much get you all of these LCD games. And this, after trying many ways, is by far my favorite way to launch these. I also have a big box set up, like I mentioned, but the metadata is just so scrambled right now, it's not really worth uh, playing them through that unless you want to be controller only, in which case, yeah, that works great. Oh, as for recommendations, uh, my other big game recommendation after you get your fill of Gauntlet is definitely Game & Watch Zelda. I think it might be one of my favorite Zelda games, really solid. But okay, I promised you all uh, the Tiger Gamecom, and I want to show you why I use Launchbox and why I think it's so important, especially if you want to get into stuff. Like, I don't think I'm going to make a video on it, but I'm just going to say, when I'm dealing with uh, Gamecom, you can also do stuff like uh, the Mega Duck and uh, Watara Supervision, which are systems that you can't really emulate anywhere else. So we're going to dive into Gamecom here. Now I did, now I started doing what I did before. You start the same way. You go here, you import your ROMs, and you find your Gamecom folder, which I'll actually like walk through this because I kind of blazed through this portion of it last time. And if people are confused about this, I understand. So I didn't really go through this at all. But I, I don't know, I kind of assume, which is wrong of me, that this isn't the first video on main front ends you've watched, but if it is, uh, I'm sorry. No, I'm trying my best to show you all uh, what's up here. But you're going to want to go ahead and find uh, your Gamecom uh, ROM set folder, and you're going to want to add that folder. And so platform for games, chances are you don't have, oh, sorry. I'm one, I'm one ahead. So, yeah, it's a Gamecom here, for sure. And then, uh, chances are you don't have a Gamecom emulator yet. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add a Gamecom emulator. I'm actually going to edit it, though. And this is what I want to show you. So I called the emulator Gamecom. Emulator path. You actually set it up just like MAME, exactly like MAME. However, there's a difference. And you can see it right here in this command line parameter. You can see Gamecom, and then you have a dash, and you have cart1. What does this do? So Gamecom is a file within your main set, your main ROM set, that big set you downloaded, called Gamecom.zip, and that's the BIOS for the Gamecom itself. Cart1 is basically loading whatever game I'm picking in my Gamecom playlist that I'll generate shortly, and that is loading that game into the Gamecom.zip. So if you look down here, cart1 is going to be the full path to the ROM file, which is going to be whatever Gamecom game I pick. And you're going to want to go here and make sure it's associated here, and that's how you set up your emulator. Now, can you add this right here to MAME and just say default command line um, Gamecom cart1? Yes, yes you can. But I'm making these all separate, in case in the future something comes out to emulate Gamecom games better than MAME. Because there is... Gamecom emulation is not perfect. I think it's due to the lack of interest more than anything. And I'll show you 
an issue I have with it, but I would recommend making individual emulators each time you need to do something like this in case in the future something crops up that's just better, just superior. So that's how you set up the GameCom emulator. So we're going to X out of that, pretend that's how we set it up. I use files in their current location. Going to want to import them and you go through imports just like you did with main. Now if it's giving you a big stink, uh, you might just want to say it's a main, choose main as your emulator at first and then switch it to, then make a GameCom emulator and switch it. I don't think that's an issue for most people, but I know I had to do that uh, for one of my emulators, so I'm just mentioning it here. So once you have that playlist all generated, you should have this, Platform GameCom. Now, I don't know how I'm sorting this, but uh, all the games are here, all your favorites, and these actually have accurate metadata and even like their own uh, big box video should you want it. So I'm going to boot up, uh, let's just say, I like Sonic, right? Let's play uh, the best Sonic game ever made, Sonic game for the GameCon. And as you can see here, it's loading up the BIOS here. One thing I haven't figured out is it doesn't seem like any scores are retained. So if I hit high score there, it's going to do uh, solitaire. So it does work surprisingly well with a mouse, like just touch icons. But if you're controller only, you're going to want to hit uh, your button A twice really fast like that. And you have to hit it twice to kind of like activate the button and then press it in again. It's strange, but it's also the game com. And that'll get you right into Sonic Jam. I'll just pick whatever, sure. As you can see here, it plays, uh, it plays, it runs. And uh, one thing about the GameCom emulator, though, that I wanted to mention is that it runs really fast. Like this timer, like, you only have 10 minutes in Sonic, and this shouldn't be running this fast. I noticed this way more when I was playing uh, this quiz games on GameCom, which, not the, like, stay in the GameCom too much in this video or anything. But if you're playing like a quiz game, it's not a bad system. Or like a casino game, it does what it's supposed to do. It's really just action games and uh, rushed games and poor physics and then the timers being off like this time up here. Oh, music plays really fast too for some reason. There we go. Got over the big hill. But that's how you do GameCom emulation. And, yeah, people are probably like, why would he emulate this? But I genuinely was having a pretty good time today playing, uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, yeah, this QuizWiz game. Pretty good. Pro tip, disable the timer and options. But that's how you set up the GameCom, and just spoiler, that's also how you'd set up the Supervision, uh, this Mega Duck. I'm not done yet, but, uh... It's also how you set up something called the Sony Pocket Station. And I'm not going to do a full tutorial for this. It's really just GameCom, but get Sony Pocket Station ROMs instead. But once you get this put together, you can, like, I don't know, play Pocket Digimon World Agumon. And you'll want to tap up or down, is if you don't, the whole screen will flash and that doesn't bode well. And just set your time to whatever. I screwed that up. He's going to be sleeping now, but oh well. And you can uh, go on a little Digimon adventure. Talk to your little Agumon buddy. But I think that's where I'll end this video for today. That was a lot of information. I'm ready to help in the comments. I know I kind of glossed over through some things, maybe blazed through some content, but this was a lot for me to figure out, and I just wanted to put out a video that kind of pieced this all together. I have a whole nother video coming soon about the Sega Pico that's kind of in, a, in the same vein as this video, but there's a lot of weird quirks to that system that I want to go over, and I'm still figuring a couple things out. But thanks so much for watching this video. I hope more people get into LCD gaming. I think it's really cool. There's plenty of games that have gone unplayed, and I swear if you play every GameCom game in its library, you're actually going to find a couple that aren't bad. Uh, lights out is probably fine too, I, I guess, for like a game of its time. I mean, how can you not like that? But this is only easy feet saying, look ma, no hands. Thanks for watching.